Hey, what's going on, everyone? As you can tell, I am still kicking, and I just this came to my mind after watching E3, so I figured, hey, let's just do a video on the top 10 best moments of E3. So let's begin. The first one would be, in my opinion, the announcement of Metroid Prime 4, the teaser trailer. So we all know that it's being worked on, and I just uh, we all knew it would come eventually, and we finally have it. It's one of two games that people have been anticipating for quite a while, a second one, I think you already know. And uh, another thing to go along with that is, actually there apparently is a remake of Metroid 2, and they show gameplay of that after the Nintendo Spotlight, so that's another cool addition. Now we move on to the second thing, and that is a combination of two announcements, or one gameplay and one announcement, and that would be for pirate games. Apparently pirate games are coming back, or I mean, I don't know if they've ever been before, so it's nice to see that that's a cool era of time people are taking. We have, first we have of course the gameplay shown of Sea of Thieves by Rare, which unfortunately it's not the Rare that we know of from before who made Banjo-Kazooie, but I really liked the gameplay they showed, it looked really cool, and I just, I like how you can go from the ship to the ground to treasure hunting, and I also like the gameplay mechanic where you get like a, a treasure map and like on it they also have riddles and stuff to find the treasure. So that's pretty cool. You have you and your, your team of pi your band of pirates figure it out. And then of course, you know, it wouldn't be fun without some sort of combat and they were fighting skeletons and stuff. As you can see, haven't seen them use a sword or cutlass, but I'm guessing you can do that and you know, have, you know, fight like that with other players, which they showed them just blunder busting them but you know I hope there's a little more dynamic to that but that looks really cool and then I just I just the one thing I have complained about is I hope you get to fight other things other than just skeletons that come out of the ground and go yee yee you know I hope that you get to fight other things which leads into the next game Skull and Bones I believe it's called by Ubisoft and at the end of that trailer sorry for spoiling it but apparently you get to fight a kraken or, or a giant squid of some sort and I hope that Sea of Thieves have some other cool enemies to fight too. And going into Skull and Bones more so, if you hadn't played the Pirate Assassin's Creed games, which I think I played a little bit of 4, and they blatantly just said, hey, we took the gameplay from that and hopefully they expanded upon it. They didn't really say that, but I think it's suggested with, you know, the ship squads you can have and, like, the ship classes, in fact, you can customize your boats. But I hope, and unfortunately this is what Ubisoft does, is sometimes they are a little stingy on their content, so hopefully there's a lot more to it than just a few matches. Of course, there's got to be a campaign mission. But I think that's really cool that pirate games are kind of on the up and up. Because, believe me, we're, we, we're done with pirate movies, and I'm, I'm looking at you, Pirates of the Caribbean. The next game, now this one, many people would be like, what, are you serious? That would be Starlink Battle for Atlas, and this was an Ubisoft game. And I know what you're thinking, you're looking at it right now, it's like, wait, this is just Skylanders with ships. Well, that's not, I mean, you're right, but hopefully you're wrong in the fact that I hope that the game's actually kind of fun and actually difficult and for maybe slightly older ages too, because Skylanders is just terrible. I mean, it's just easy and it's for children, and we all know that, but I really like this because they're modular ships that you get to put together, add parts to, and, and such, and I think that's a really cool idea, because you know, not only is this the physical game, like, figures and stuff that interact with the game is a really viable market, of course, with Skylanders, duh, and Amiibos, I think that's a really cool move, and hopefully the game will be challenging and fun enough, and I'm really excited about playing that when that comes out. The next game is Wolfenstein 2 at Bethesda. We'll we'll talk about how terrible that was later in the next video. But Wolfenstein 2, it kind of doesn't make any sense because it's like, well, didn't BJ Blaskowitz kind of save the free world from Nazis? But I guess not. But I know that Machine Games did a really good job of making not only fun gameplay for the original Wolfenstein remake. I mean, yeah, it was a remake pretty much. Uh, I think that they added a really awesome, unique story to it. I really was enthralled with this story and I hope they continue that with the next one and of course have some really crazy fun gameplay as you can see from this awesome montage I really I thought the, the montage where it was pretty damn cool and that'll be it for this and then next we move on to Bioware's Anthem which looks amazing that game looks so awesome I like how the graphics look and, and even the gameplay taken from the uh, combat looks like it's taken from a little bit from uh, Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect Andromeda 
But that was a really cool game. You're basically Iron Man in the Metroid world, which is really an awesome combination if you think about it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that game. I That's a really cool exploration game. Hopefully there's enough stuff to do. The next game was one that I was actually really not really happy with originally, not because of the gameplay itself, but the aesthetic, and that would be the Mario Rabbids. I can't remember Battle for Mushroom Kingdom, or whatever it is. I'm reading off a script. I did not write down the full name, but pretty much what it is is Mario and Rabbids XCOM, which is pretty interesting, especially for a Nintendo console doing strategy games. That's something really unique. And I actually think it's a really cool idea. I don't even personally like XCOM because I'm not too much into that manage all that RPG managing stuff. But this hopefully will be simple enough and fun at the same time that I think I can get into it. But it, it by far is the most weirdly intriguing game out of all of the games shown at E3. And so that'll be cool to see later on. The next game is, and I know Pro Jared was going nuts over this, that would be Monster Hunter World, which was on Sony's private conference. Which also is exciting to me because I never really was interested in playing the 3DS versions or, you know, the Wii, Wii, Wii U versions. But now that it's coming to PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox, I could, um, I could at least get it for one of those. I don't know, I think the game is much more suited when it looks that fantastic. So I definitely will be getting into that game with my friends too. So that would be really cool. Now the next game is another one like Metroid Prime 4, but has been on hold for an even longer amount of time. 17 years, I believe. And that is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Unfortunately, there was no actual gameplay. It was just a trailer showing they're working on it. But I think this... I think, I know, I know that people were, went crazy over this. It is a prequel, however, but regardless, I can't wait to play it, and I really need to play the first one because, I'll admit, I haven't played it at all, and I really should get on that. Now, the next game is not really the fact that it's the game, as it is what's around it. And this would be the fact that EA announced Battlefront 2 will have all their DLC for free. Just like they did for Titanfall 2. And I am so happy for this. And if you don't, you know, if you don't care for EA anyway and you still don't want to get this game, you have to appreciate the fact that we are winning. Us gamers are winning. And that is the most important thing to take from this. EA is giving in to us, finally. And whatever we're doing, um, for example, like for Battlefield 1, I didn't buy any of the DLC and I won't. I just bought the game. But whatever we're doing... Like, what, if you're just boycotting their games altogether because they're not free DLC, you're not buying the DLC, just keep doing it because it proves that we can win against these fucking corrupt companies and get the content, the full content that we deserve. Because waiting for that, not all the game, not having all the DLC when we buy it is bad enough as it is, but having to pay for it after waiting is even more ridiculous. And I bet this has gone over a million times, but I think that is a great move by EA. And I think, I think we have, uh, us fans of games to, uh, applaud for it. So that's really awesome on us and really awesome EA. Stop being so damn corrupt. The team at DICE heard our feedback loud and clear on the previous Battlefront and are committed to keeping this community together with themed seasons of content post-launch for all players at no additional charge. The next thing would be something that was probably the most underrated aspect of E3. And this happened during the Xbox conference. And I hate Minecraft. Believe me, I hate that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's so so cringy and all that. But it's not about the game as it is the fact that Xbox is more than willing to work with, to have cross-play with mobile and Nintendo Switch, which is huge. And I know this is also going to happen for Rocket League, but I can't find the exact clip that it came from. But I know this is happening with Rocket League, except there's one company who doesn't want to do this yet and it's sony i don't mean to be giving them shit at all but they really need to stop stop holding back stop separating game gamers people can buy their console but then they can play with anyone else they want and i think that the fact that xbox is taking more steps with this and nintendo is even being all right with this and taking steps toward unifying everyone i think this is the most underrated moment of e3 And now, we get to the best moment of E3. And that would be Devolver Digital's entire, well, quote-unquote, press conference. If you didn't already see it, stop. Stop watching this video right now and and go to it. Because it is phenomenal 
shit posting. It is great. It it takes the shit out of all these companies. The slogan of it, of the beginning of the, of their quote unquote stream, was tomorrow's unethical business practices today. So you should check it out. And I really don't want to give it away because it is great. And that'll be it for this list of top ten moments of E3. Unfortunately, E3 this year was kind of underwhelming. Actually, you know, I think that it's been better in other years or. Or has it been better? I don't fucking know. Anyway, that'll be it for this. What was your favorite aspect or favorite moment of E3 2017? Let's discuss in the comments below. And that'll be it for this video, and I'll be making the top 10 worst moments of E3 2017. So that'll be fun. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. That may or may not come out. Countdowns, commentaries, all that crap. So I'll be making the next video for top 10 worst moments E3 2017 right now, and I'll see you then. As we get ourselves set up for the knock, you get around the back of a battle mech and penetrate.